The formation of Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore happened during the last glacial period as glaciers moved over much of Canada and the Midwest United States. Periods of advancing and retreating left sands and sediments in their wake. The glaciers carved out the Lake Michigan Basin but left behind a ridge of rock separated from what is now mainland Michigan that would eventually form the island chain ranging from the Port Oneida to the Straits of Mackinac, including North and South Manitou Islands. Over time, meltwater and westerly winds gradually smoothed out what was originally rock and coarse material, leaving behind fine sands that would eventually lead to the dunes, sandbars, and spits that we now see today. Both North and South Manitou are made up of tilted limestone bedrock buried beneath glacial sediments. North Manitou being the second largest, and South Manitou the largest and southernmost island in the chain of islands. The indigenous peoples of the Great Lakes have passed down the story of this land through their own oral traditions. Anishinaabe tribes used the dunes as a landmark and told the story of a mother bear and her twin bear cubs who fled the shores of Wisconsin across the waters of Lake Michigan due to famine. The cubs became very tired as they made their way across the lake and would eventually sink beneath the water, drowning. Mother Bear made it to shore, her heart broken. She waited there for her cubs, but when they didn't come back up, she laid down to sleep, remaining to wait and watch for her two cubs forever. The great spirit Manitou sensed this anguish and lifted the two bears as islands, naming them South and North Manitou and covering the mother bear with sand to mark her eternal resting place overlooking her children. One of the more unique activities in this area can be found in the waters surrounding the islands, which are home to 16 known shipwrecks and the remains of seven docks. The deepest wreck is 165 feet, but some are within five feet of the surface, so there are many options depending on your diving experience and comfort. You can see two centuries worth of history here if you're interested in diving. One of the shipwrecks is the Alva Bradley, an early Great Lakes schooner built in 1870 and wrecked off the coast of North Manitou in 1894. It has been flattened and disarticulated, leaving a large amount of debris surrounding the wreckage. Historically, North Manitou was trafficked by sailors looking for wood to fuel their boilers as they traveled between Chicago and the Straits but with no harbor, the island wasn't as popular as South Manitou. Logging docks were installed to allow easier access, and this led to a small village being built and several sawmills popping up along the island. Many of the buildings on North Manitou are abandoned today as logging and lighthouses became obsolete over the decades, leading to the residents of North Manitou to leave their homes. When visiting, please avoid entering any old buildings as they are not maintained and can be dangerous. Day trips are not offered, but visiting here offers a primitive style camping experience and is great for experienced campers who want to explore in relative solitude. The only way to reach North Manitou is by boat, most commonly using the passenger ferry. There is an option to camp at the village campsite before departing, where you have access to potable water, fire rings, and an outhouse. Backcountry camping is visitors' main option provided you have the proper permit, park pass, and fees submitted before doing so. There is no food, shelter, nor medical amenities, and wilderness camping does not allow open fires, but gas stoves are permitted. This island also adheres to a strict leave no trace policy. Everything you pack in, you must pack out. Leave things where you find them, and please respect the wildlife. North Manitou has 23 miles of hiking trails where you can visit inland lakes, old farms, and see many local flora and fauna, including piping plovers, warblers, bald eagles, and even violets, white pine, and cedar. Lake Manitou is about a two and a half mile hike from a small village where you can find a number of beautiful sites to camp and fish along the lakeshore. There are a handful of plover nests found on the island coast and are clearly marked to avoid as these birds are endangered. Additionally, people have accidentally introduced invasive plant species to the island, so please make sure to utilize boot mats on the docks to remove non-native seeds and ensure your camping gear is clean before traveling to North Manitou. Settlement of these islands originated on South Manitou as it has a protected harbor that made it easy to access the land. Logging was common in this area as sailors would stop to refuel using the plethora of trees in the forests of the Manitou Islands, leading to docks being built and immigrant farmers settling on the small island. 
The waters surrounding the Manitou Islands can be dangerous, so it soon led to lightkeepers moving in as lighthouses were built. Similar to North Manitou, as technology advanced and logging became unnecessary for fuel, the homes and villages on South Manitou were abandoned over time, leaving the ghost towns that are there today. Unlike North Manitou, visitors can take a day trip to South Manitou Island. Daily ferry trips leave at 10 a.m. and return at 5.30 p.m. A park pass is required to visit the island and reservations are recommended. Amenities are very limited and camping on South Manitou is limited to three sites as this island is much smaller than its counterpart. You are required to have a backcountry permit before camping on site. Each campsite has individual campsites that are limited to four persons and two tents. Bay and Weather Station each have three group campsites that can hold 9 to 20 campers with a max of 10 tents. These group sites are only available by reservation. None of the sites have potable water, but Bay and Weather Station do have community fire rings. Low impact camping is the most important rule when visiting the island. Leave no trace and stay on the paths. There are five short hikes that are great for day trips to South Manitou that will pass by the village, the schoolhouse, Florence Lake, the lighthouse, and the cemetery. The village has a small museum where visitors can learn about the history of the island, and there are even tours of the lighthouse not too far from the docks. If hiking isn't your thing, there is an option to take a wagon tour around the island that visits the farm and schoolhouse or to see the cedar trees and shipwrecks. Visitors staying on site can also enjoy longer hikes to see the farmhouses, the shipwreck of the Morazem, and even take a trek along the beach around the entirety of the island. While hiking around the island, you will see many old growth cedars, some older than 500 years, and maybe even some protected fauna such as herrings and ring-billed gulls. As always, be sure to do your research before visiting and make sure to respect the land and the creatures living here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave us a comment with any topics you'd like to see covered, and don't forget to rock that subscribe button.